I think we've kind of beat this to death quite a bit. <laughs> but one last thing before we go, because th this is the one last early question that we actually have here, and that is, do, are we going to treat people, I mean, we get back to this, a 5 versus 10. Do any of you use the molecular profiling now, the tests like ProSigma or um, the Breast Cancer Index? to determine whether people should be five or ten years of, of total endocrine therapy? I think it's a really good idea, and right. I've never used it. <laughs> you think it's good that you've never used it, all right. I can't see sending in a test at five years. I'm afraid no one will approve it anyway. Actually, yeah. they will. Believe it or not, they uh, have. Mm -hmm. Maybe not in California. Sarah, what do you think? Have you used it? I'm not using it now. So much of this is a, a long conversation. Some patients have been waiting for that five-year mark to come up for five years because of the symptoms and side effects mm -hmm. they're having from therapy. Yeah. Other women really want to continue their therapy. They've tolerated it. They have a high risk. They feel like it's their crutch saving them from uh, metastatic recurrence. So usually the patients already know what they want to do. The conversation has been predetermined. So I haven't found a setting uh, where I really need to have that conversation with patients. And a lot of my patients have become menopausal in those in those five years. We know they're higher yeah, risk and yeah. now we can switch them to an AI. So that's that's helpful. It just hasn't come up so much in the clinic for me. So it sounds like very few people use it. No, I just think we need more data. There's going to be a treasure trove of data coming out in the next next few years. I, as I said, I do kind of pay attention to that recurrence score. And my kind of rule of thumb, what I'm doing, I think, as I said, that the really strong ER and low proliferative are those that probably have the lower metastatic potential and perhaps are so endocrine therapy sensitive, even if they did have metastatic potential, that their, you know, their, their benefit from more endocrine therapy may be very, very marginal. Not necessarily zero, but very marginal. Where I worry, and then conversely, those with the low ER and the high proliferative, their natural history plays out pretty quickly, mm -hmm. and their endocrine therapy sensitivity ain't that great. Right, so right? those are the people, those people are going to, that, things like oncotype and whatever, a clinical, you know, correlation, those are the first five-year people. Correct. But I'm thinking Correct. more now, it's five years out, a woman has come in, she's miserable, she has hot flashes, she just doesn't want to be in it anymore. Well, you're always balancing risk and benefit. Right, and you know she's that. looking for a way out. You know, maybe she's node positive. She's looking for a way out. And I Although these tests are not valid I, I for node positive. I make strong recommendations. You know, you know, obviously the ladies, like you said, they have their own very, very strong opinions too. But I make, I make strong recommendations whether to stay on or not because what worries me is the woman who has some tumor burden uh, and strong ER and some proliferation. Yep. That's where I think that a lot of these tests that are out there, the endo predict, the BCI, really what they're getting at is ER signaling and proliferation. At the end of the day, we're gonna have an algorithm, we can plug it into the computer, and we're gonna have clinical and you know, well done, centrally done standardization of key 67, for example. We're gonna get a we're gonna be able to push a button yeah. and we're gonna be able to tell these ladies. But I think some of the biology is beginning to come clear on it. Right. Well the, the thing breast I struggle with clear. most right now is my postmenopausal high risk women who are ending five years. Yeah. So you have I, no data. And no what do data. we do with the AI? And I think, yeah, yeah we, we just don't know. The Breast Cancer Index, though, looks at something a little bit different. You know, it's kind of an interesting question because there are probably those who have low proliferative, strongly ERPR positive disease who still have a significant risk of relapse at year 12, and we may impact outcome in some of yeah, those women. I just don't mm -hmm. know, you know, mm -hmm. balancing it. We need more data. I mm -hmm. totally agree. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that'll come. I think a lot of people are going to be using the blocks from B42, you know, which is the five versus 10 years of endocrine therapy. Mm -hmm. All of these like Which I hear is gonna come out in 16. I had heard oh, that hopefully. from Terry Madness. Really? Oh, I yeah, hope Terry so. Yeah, Terry said 16, time. so I tell the patients that, yeah. Well, hopefully there'll yeah. be a lot of correlative yeah. studies that'll mm -hmm. help us figure out this question. All right, so now that we